like it. Hello and welcome to episode 20 of Behind the Raw, the official podcast of West Tigers, where we give it to you straight, where we kick speculation into touch and where we learn more about the people and the stories behind this great club. It has certainly been a tough few days. Um, It was a a long trip home um, from Townsville after our huge loss to the Cowboys. We understand um, our fans' frustration, members' frustration, Everyone here at the club is feeling it. I guess the the good thing about this game is we get another chance to to move on and, so to speak, get back on the horse. Um, Very tough mission for the boys on Thursday night against a team which is in really good form at the moment um, in Cronulla Sharks. So, uh, look, as promised every week, win, lose or draw, uh, we'll always be here with Behind the Raw. This week's guest is very much looking to the future, um, as well as overseeing all of our junior representative teams and our women's program. Uh, His role, I guess, strategically is to ensure that we develop and retain the very best young talent within our system. And that includes the MacArthur region, southwest of Sydney, and also the inner west as well. It is our general manager of women's and pathways joining us on episode 20 of Behind the Raw, Matthew, Betsy. Betsy, thanks for jumping in. Thanks, Chris. Thanks for having me. Uh, We're going to learn a whole lot more about you and and your role. Um, We'll we'll have a a bit of lighthearted chat as well. But, I mean, it's been a a real, as I say, a a tough few days for the club. No one ever goes into a match expecting to be rolled as we did. Um, The coaching staff, the players, very disappointed. They've owned Mm. that. They've had to quickly move on because it's a five-day turnaround. Five-day turnarounds um, in this sport are not ideal, mm. uh, particularly when you've had a long trip as well to Townsville. Yeah. But they've trained well this week. They seem to have a spring in their step. Um, and you've got to go again. You've been involved in, in, in many sports, mostly cricket before you, you joined us here. And forget about you know NRL here for a moment, but... It's important for an athlete who does go through a, a big loss or, or a big setback to, I guess, reset mentally as quickly as you can. Yeah, absolutely. And and I think, um, you know, whilst it's the performance of the NRL team, I think everyone's hurting. So I think that's the, the part that you have to acknowledge. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, you have to reset quickly. And that's, I think, part of being a professional athlete but a professional organization is you have to do that as well you have to acknowledge the performance uh, whether it's good or bad um, and then you have to move on really quickly Um, and I think the players and coaching staff will be doing that Um, as you said you get another opportunity the the great thing about sport Mm. is you know you're only as good as your next game so um, the players have got an opportunity to sort of move forward really quickly Um, and a a short turnaround is never ideal but maybe in this instance it it could be well that's pretty much what Tim Sheens was saying uh, in, in the presses we did today. You know, he, he even said, I think, to he even said, look, the boys would have loved to have played the very next day if they could. They want to atone for where they where they went wrong. But it's it's a good point that you, where you, you make there that the whole club is feeling it because we just sort of think of the team, don't we? The players and our fans probably feeling it most. But yeah, you're right, and that, that in a way is, is a very good thing that all departments within this club are, are very connected. Mm. Um, they're not just here doing their job. They're very involved with the outcome of the team and the whole the whole club. Yeah, yeah. No, I agree. And I think um, it's something that probably the public, the members, the fans don't necessarily see yeah. um, is the people hurting and the, the people in the background, um, whatever their role might be at West Tigers, working their backsides off to, yeah. you know, ultimately for NRL and, and NRLW success. So yeah. there's a lot of people putting the, the hard work in. Um, but, yeah, that, that means when you, you do have a loss, you're hurt. Yeah. Um, but when you do have a win, you you celebrate the wins as well. So there's some ups and downs, um, and we've just got to work through that as a, as a club. But there's, yeah, a lot of people um, hurt when we lose, but there's also a lot of people yeah. doing the, some hard work in the background. Yeah, absolutely. Um, there's loads to talk about with you too, and, and 
it's quite time looking towards the future. So the Australian, I was going to say the Australian school boys, but we can't say that now because it's the girls involved as well. Mm, yep. The Australian secondary schools championships are on this week as we speak. We have got a number of um, our Pathways players heavily involved and I, I wouldn't be surprised if a few of them might earn a green and gold selection. Um, there's loads happening in terms of the Cubs program as well. Uh, we've had some players announced this week in the under-19s, both men's and women's state of origin. A lot happening beneath the NRL surface, if you like. Um, and then the women's NRLW kicks off pretty bloody soon and they got our first trial this weekend. Yeah, yeah, there's absolutely, there's a lot lot happening at the moment um, and a lot to be excited for, I think. Mm. Um, as you said, we've... We've got a lot of great players coming through our system. Um, we've put a lot of time and energy into the pathways to to make sure that's the case. Um, and yeah, we might not see the um, the end result of that for a couple of years. Um, I think we're starting to see the sort of the first, the bit of the tip of the iceberg, if you like, with uh, players like Talon um, playing in the NRL squad. Um, like you said, good representation of Australian school boys and school girls, mm. um, New South Wales and Queensland Origin teams for the under nineteen. So. Um, there is lots to look forward to, yeah. um, and lots happening at the moment, which is which is great. Um, and then the NRLW season around the corner, um, we're really excited about what our what our squad might be able to put on the field. Well, we're going to be talking about all of that sort of stuff. So I'm looking forward to um, to the chat and more about your role and more about you know what is a development club, what does it entail? Um, because unless you sort of work here, you, you, a lot goes on. Yeah, um, a lot goes on. It's not just about recruitment. Mm. Uh, the successful clubs are the ones that can, I guess, bring their own through and, and keep them here. Right, uh, Betsy, um, this is how it works, mate. Okay. Have you watched any of the Behind the Roars? Yeah, I've been keeping, keeping oh, in touch. Yeah, yeah. Oh, right. You're right at home. <laughs> um, we'll ask you um, a set of six. We'll, the whistle will blow. We'll ask you a set of six. Okay, we'll get to know you a little bit more, yep. a bit more about you. Um, then we'll dive into a deeper chat, middle of the program about football, about development, about all the stuff that we've just touched on there. Uh, and then with about um, five minutes to go, so the clock up there, yeah, when she stops on at five minutes, uh, we'll throw our five, favourite five at you. And I, I imagine there's going to be a fair bit of cricket uh, chat in this as well, given your <laughs> your background, which we'll learn more about um, very, very shortly. Righto, uh, let's launch into the opening set of six on Behind the Raw with Matt Betsy. There is the whistle. And away we go. Righto, um, tell us a bit more about your background. Uh, where do I start? Um, probably as a kid, I grew up playing footy and, and cricket, like many you know, Aussie kids did, summer and winter. Sydney? Uh, in Sydney, yeah, Western Sydney. So I grew up in Western Sydney. Um, and then, yeah, it got to a point where I had to choose between one of the sports and, and I was going okay at cricket, got picked in the, I think the New South Wales under-19 um, squad. Yeah. Um, so sort of went down that path. Um, and was fortunate to, to have a few years as a contractor player with New South Wales and then, uh, yeah, moved um, into the, the development side of it. So I worked as a development officer with Cricket New South Wales for a number of years and um, ultimately went down and, and worked at Cricket Australia in Melbourne uh, probably for the last 10 years prior to, to starting with the West Tigers. So um, always got a keen eye on, on all sports, uh, but cricket and, and, and rugby league. And then, yeah, the last two years I've been with, uh, obviously, the West Tigers um, – heading up the Women's and Pathways program. So it's been, uh, from that perspective, it's been a really good journey. Um, really enjoyed it. Um, as part of that, as I said, moved down to Melbourne. So I spent probably eight years in Melbourne. Was that hard, getting you, luring you down to Melbourne? <laughs> Sydney <laughs> boy through and through? Yeah, yeah, it was. It's certainly not hard. Were you single then? No, no. Oh, yeah. uh, married so with kids, family. so the whole family moved down. Um, again, things lined up. Uh, it was uh sort of preschool for kids moving down there. So a yeah. few things lined up and um, I wouldn't change it. We had a great time down there and got really into the um, culture of what Melbourne has to offer, um, including the AFL. Um, but yeah, Cricket Australia, you know, being based at the MCG at Jollymont there is mm. a pretty good place to work. And um, again, had ups and downs with uh, with Cricket Australia as well. Um, so yeah, probably put me in good well, stead. Well, through to, that period, I mean, yeah. Mm. Yeah, there were a lot of... Ups and downs, yeah, um, and then there continues to be in in cricket. Um, you, so a bit of footy as well. What position? Uh, prop? Four? <laughs> what were you? I was a bit lighter than what I am now, but um, 
Yeah, I played, I played mostly mostly lock and uh, a little bit in the halves. So for uh, for school, and then I was at um, at Mount Pritchard, Mounties. Mounties. Yeah. So uh, yeah, grew up uh, in the in Western Sydney. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I just I just really enjoyed it. Um, can't say I was any good at, at rugby league, but um, well, really you're certainly playing. good at cricket, and we're going to talk more about um, your cricketing career, and then your the administration work later years that you did with Cricket Australia, um, and that's pretty much how you. Mm. Well, when did you when did you first have thoughts about moving into a sports administration role? Um, probably like um, most athletes. You get to a point where you 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 know and you mm. you you're, stu- you're told by the people around you and um, that you need to have something outside of of um, sport. Um, so I probably started while I was playing and just um, I started coaching, coaching junior teams, being involved in the high performance programs at Cricket New South Wales where I could um, as a player, um, and then just yeah got it, went from there. So um, that's probably where it started, and I, I was just really. I've always been really grateful for the opportunities that I've been provided as a as a junior player, um, mostly mm-hmm. cricket, but um, in rugby league as well. You know, the volunteers, the clubs, the people that put in so much time and effort into uh, making sport run. Mm-hmm. Um, so I sort of always had that connection, and I've been really grateful for the opportunities that I've been provided, and, and to be to be able to work in a, a development role initially, where you can continue to provide those opportunities for young boys and girls. I think was something that just really appealed to me and. Was okay. it a, was it a uh, a pathways role at Cricket Australia that before you were here at West Tigers? Yeah, yeah. Yep. So I was I was head of coach development. Yep. Um, so I was heavily involved with the the coaching programs and the um, development of all our coaching staff. Um, and then with that, um, we developed like a coaching and talent sort of network. So there was twenty seven coaching and talent specialists across the the country. Um, that we sort of over, oversaw and just helped sort of develop those the, the talent coming through. So coaching's a, a really key part of developing talent. Um, so we wanted to make sure we invested in the coaches who were working with the best young boys and girls. Um, so that 13 to sort of 16-year-old group, we had the best coaches working with them. They could come through the system. And then by the time they hit um, state teams at you know, under 17s, under 19s, mm. they've had a good sort of solid grounding. Um, so that was the... the one of the primary focuses. Um, also, there's a um, lot of opportunity for young, talented boys and girls these days. They, they've got so many more opportunities to to play um, elite sport or professional sport um, in all different codes. Mm. Um, so there's a bit of a, um, a war for talent, if you like, around that age group to, to make sure the best athletes are playing your sport. I'll ask you, not in the set of six, but when we get a bit deeper into the chat too about some of the stuff that you've learnt and you've implemented at Cricket Australia in terms of educating the coaches and those pathways, are you using some of that here at the club now? I imagine you are. Before I get there, I've got to ask you this, right? Now, I don't know a whole lot about your your background in terms of cricket, but you played for Australia once, right? <laughs> Tell us I was, about yeah, that. Yeah, I was, a, I was a substitute fielder, um, for the Australian team, I think it was T- the th- test or what were we talking about? It was a one dayer, so it was a third final against uh, South Africa in maybe '97, um, and I was just I was in and around the the New South Wales setup at the time, and uh, coming into the ground just as a spectator, the um, the guy who it was a change room attendant yeah. um, saw me, and I, I just had a conversation with him, and then went off to watch the game, and then uh, I think Ian Harvey got injured um, during the game. And they didn't have a 12th, 12th man. So um, across the loudspeaker, they said, oh, is, um, can Matt Betsy come to the Australian dressing room for No us? way. <laughs> <laughs> I, I thought it was a bit of a stitch up. So I didn't really think of it the first time. And then it, they said it again. Um, so I went down and they said, oh, listen, can, do you mind putting some clothes on and fielding for us? Because we've, we've got no reserves. Oh, yes, please. Um, so, yeah, so um, <laughs> it all happened pretty quickly. It was pretty much, um, you know, right time, right spot sort of thing. But um yeah, it was a great experience. The the team at the time was, you know, littered with talent. Um, I knew some of the New South Wales players, um, yeah. obviously from training and and being in and around the New South Wales setup. But um, yeah, great opportunity. Wow, not many of us can say the you know, the late great <laughs> Richie Benno was was he? I imagine probably 
chief commentator of the- yeah yeah he was common comment commentating and uh said a few kind words about me as well which is nice um wow but yeah just um just that, the whole experience was great just to get a bit of an insight into what happens at that level it's yeah um i always hoped like everyone does to to play for australia one day um that's as close as i got but um it was <laughs> well, you have you have you not have officially played, but it was well um, you yeah. you were out in the field mate you were there <laughs> You were ter- you turned up with a hot dog and maybe a can of Coke and lemonade. You're just going to watch some yeah. cricket. And before you know it, <laughs> you're out in the bloody middle. That's a brilliant story, Betsy. Yeah, yeah. No, yeah. it's great. And, and um, you know, even to this day, you know, there's there's people that, um, you know, in that team who remember it, um, which is great. You know, the, the, yeah. the cricket network is, is, Do you is wonderful. you remember the captain would have been at that stage? Steve Waugh was captain. Yeah, so I had um, it, it was funny, and I got interviewed. I think on Triple M the, the next morning, and you know I had Steve Waugh's pants on, I had four <laughs> rifle shoes on, so I was basically ruffling through everyone's bag while they were on the field to to just try and get an. Who's Hector? Did you borrow? <laughs> <laughs> Didn't need to go that far, which unfortunately, uh, but uh, great fielding. Yeah, it was just uh, yeah. just throwing everything on, and then you know it was really quickly it, it all happened, and then maybe a wicket fell or there was drinks, and I had to run the drinks out. So you know within. Yeah. You know, a couple of minutes, I was sort of out in the middle of the field, sort of giving out drinks, and you know, Shane Warne, Adam Gilchrist, Steve War, Mark War. Wow. Um, you know, that era of, of player was just um, amazing. So I was, I was, you know, awestruck from from the first couple of minutes. So I bet you were. That's a, that's an amazing, amazing story. <laughs> you couldn't write that sort of stuff. <laughs> um, so away from footy and, and away from cricket, what other things do you do you get up to? Um. Oh, it's, it's probably changed over the years. Um, I enjoy playing uh, playing golf. Um, I enjoy spending right. time at home. Uh, yeah, I, I, I well, can, not alongside your new NRLW coach, you probably don't. No, no, no. When you play with uh, with Noddy, you certainly know uh, where you stand in the pecking order. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, I enjoy going out playing golf. It takes up a lot of time, but um, you yeah, know that that's what it is. Um, I've become a bit of a coffee uh, snob um, after my time in Melbourne, so I don't mind sort of going around trying to find a, a good coffee at a good cafe and um, just chilling out. Um, don't mind reading, you know, reading books, and I'm um, big on sort of personal development, so I try and find different ways to connect with you know, people that you can learn from or books or whatever it might be, movies, um, just to make sure that you're always you know, trying to be one step ahead of um, – you know, where you can be and how you can improve yourself and, and use it for, for work purposes. Well, that is the set of six, Betsy. And on the coffee front, I you know I do like a, <laughs> a strong flat white half sugar. So <laughs> next time you're out and about, absolutely, you know where to you know, <laughs> to bring them. My desk is just down the, the hallway <laughs> from um, the very big office that you've got in Pathways. <laughs> Brighton's lawyers are the lawyers you know and trust. If you require legal representation, then why look anywhere else? Call Bryden's Lawyers on 1800 848 848. Bryden's Lawyers, we do support you in your time of need. On a serious note, though, and the Pathways team continues to expand because it is such an important um, strategically unit mm. in, in, in the business. Yeah. A development club, in essence, what, what, does, that, what does that mean? Yeah, I think um, from my perspective at least, um, and I, th- I think it gets confused a little bit out there when you say a development club. Because you have to recruit, right? Yeah, yeah. So um, what, what, how, how I frame it is development club is, is about having a junior base and supporting that junior base to come through. That doesn't exclude recruitment. So you need to then look at recruitment and be smarter or it should help you be smarter with your recruitment. So you're bringing in um, players for certain positions and certain roles at certain times. Um, but also it doesn't preclude um, the focus on winning either. Um, so I think those three things are like a bit of a Venn diagram where um, if you've got a good junior base coming through, um, you're focused on you know performing on the field and, and winning, um, and that's that's got a whole heap of benefits as part of development. Um, and then you're recruiting. So you're getting the, the good players to, to top up what you've got. Um, there's that sweet spot in the middle that um, I think everyone's trying to aim for. Some clubs they have to recruit heavier than um, because they don't have a bigger junior base. But we've, we're so fortunate that we've got um, a really big junior base both in Balmain and then in Western Suburbs and our partnership with with Group Six um, mm. that we've got a lot of players coming through. So um, a development club is first and foremost looking after those uh, players coming through, um, but then that should complement 
um, the recruitment side of things and then obviously having a focus on winning. So you're actually performing and creating a bit of a, a culture going forward. Um, you, you talked about you know, multiple pathways and, and catchment areas. So we're a bit unique compared to other clubs in that we do have, well, I guess, three catchment areas that you've just touched on there. Um so that obviously provides endless opportunities. What sort of difficulties or challenges does that throw at the club? Yeah, um, and essentially we've got um, teams across all of those three catchments. So we still play all of our junior reps and our, our run our junior development programs across Group 6, Wests and, and Balmain. So we've got three times the amount of players that other clubs have in competing and, and in competition. Um, the challenge that are, are, arises is around resourcing. Um, and we've been very fortunate in my time in the last few years that the board and the exec have been really supportive, as you touched on, um, mm. to support what we're trying to achieve and bring those players through. Um, we've got great people um, involved in running those programs. Paul Sirenen, um running the Balmain Tigers, Shannon Glant um, in the Western Suburbs area, um, Brett Kamali, um helping the coaches out and overseeing the coaches and also involved in the women's program. So we're trying to get the right people in and around those squads. Um but yeah, you do get spread thin, um, and then hopefully what that what that creates is um, a pathway, if you like, for when they get to Jersey Flag. Um, we've got the, the choice of the best players coming through at that Jersey Flag level. Mm. Um, you mentioned Shannon Gallant. Then he, I'm pretty sure, is currently at the Australian Secondary Schools Championships up uh, in Red, Redcliffe. They're being played this week as we speak. Mm. He does a wonderful job. But you're right; it's, it's really important, isn't it, to have you know, good people in those key positions which which we have got if i'm a member or i'm a fan west tigers tragic um you know we do keep hearing uh, about the younger talent coming through our system which is great and i've i've seen it firsthand you know and we've seen the likes as you mentioned of, of talent make his debut recently um Jareen bull has been a revelation and didn't come through our mm. junior system but certainly was part of our senior yep. rep system yeah there are others coming through as well some of those uh will be playing at the australian champs as we speak who are some of the you know, the young talent coming through that you know, could play nrl with this club in the not too distant future yeah so up at the australian school um school boys we've got uh, lachlan galvin performing really well at the moment um i think he's been a standout uh, for the chs team um he's in our top 30 next year um He's a, he's a 5'8", um, who's, yeah, he's performing really well. Um, so he's been part of that Western Suburbs sort of... Was he in the mat, in the mats he was in last the, year? Yeah, he was in the mats last year, played ball this year. Um, and again, moving into the top 30. Um, Luke Lalili, um, same, having a really good tournament up there. Um, he, long term, he's on our radar uh, for, for NRL sort of honours as well. So um, there's been some really good, good uh, performances up at the schoolboys. Um, and then we've been fortunate with the um, under-19 state of origin that we've had some players being selected in, in both the men's and women's team for that. So Chris Fagutu has been selected in the Queensland origin, under-19 origin team. Yeah. Um, Josh Folletti has been picked in the, the New South Wales team. So they'll be, they'll be playing against each other. They will, yeah. Um, next week? Yep, next week. So they'll, they'll, they'll face off against each other. And, and, and Josh, okay, so he, another example. So he was... Um, Northern Beach is junior, but has come into our system and, and playing mm. in all those 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 rep teams. He's been going really well. Yeah, yeah, he has, and he's he's been performing really well. And like you said, Jareem as well. So that's that part of that recruitment that you you use to to be really um, targeted and prop up the the locals local players that you've got coming through. Um, and I think we've been able to do that really well. So the West Harold Matts team um, that went through undefeated two years ago, we'll start to see them coming through. Um, certainly SG ball, Jersey flag, and then ultimately NRL um, in the future. Um, but, yeah, jo Josh has been performing really well. I, th I think he scored nearly every game this year. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, yeah, so so good good reward for his efforts in, in the Jersey flag program, but started the year in SG ball, um, yeah. Balmain, and he's progressing really well. Uh, it's wonderful, isn't it? And we saw Brandon Tumuth make his um, debut earlier in, in the year and I imagine it has a, you know, a real knock-on effect to all the other young men or boys and girls as mm. well in, in teams and in the pathways that hey look at that even when Talon made his debut a few weeks back like wow yeah it's possible 
and that's what it's all about. So yeah, absolutely, it's an exciting and job that you've got heading that up. And I imagine everyone when they do see one like a talent go bing, 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 bing yeah. to the elite level, it's um, you'd all take a, a, a bit of bit out of that. Yeah, yeah, it's the it's the old adage, you know, it takes a village to raise a child, and I'm sure there's been a lot of people involved in someone like uh, Talon's development over a number of years, whether that be at junior club footy, senior footy, West Tigers, school, mm. whatever it might be. So um, I'm sure all those people, when they see mm. that happen, um, have some pride in the role that they played in, in his development. Um, but, yeah, I, it's really exciting for us because we, you know, we get to see that. Um, some of these honours around representative um, teams and um, schoolboys um, and schoolgirls teams um, are great for the players, but also good for the system. Mm. Um, and for some for some of our players, I and I, I don't know that the players understand that they're not that far away. So you know, Talon probably didn't think he was going to play NRL this no, year. No, he didn't. No, um, he thought he might play in twenty four, maybe twenty five. Exactly. So um, I, th- I think that's testament to the the system that we've got um, in place that you know. The opportunities will certainly be there, um, and we need to continue getting better at the development opportunities for the players, so that they're getting the right skills mm. um, to develop into NRL players. Um, but it's, it's you know exciting for for our pathways players to have role models that are doing that, but also that it's not very very far off for them. So if they put some hard work in, mm. um, the rewards aren't far away. No, Talon mentioned when I spoke to him a couple of weeks ago, you know, how, who was involved and his dad and his stepmom, and also. Um, one of his dad's mates has played a you know a big mm. role in his development as a kid. Poor fellow, I mean, he's thrown into the baptism of fire. He had Melbourne Storm and, and Asa for Solomona one week, and then Talmalolo and company the next. In yeah. your first two NRL games, yeah. welcome to first grade talent. <laughs> but anyway, uh, it, it it is a good story. How does um, from what you've seen around and about the clubs, you know, rugby league pathways? How do they compare with other sports? Uh, yeah, I think I think there's a lot of things that rugby league do really well. Um, I think the system that we've got in place, particularly West Tigers, I think um, one of the things we wanted to focus on is make sure we have development programs from 13s to under 16s that lead into the junior reps. So, do other NRL? Sorry for jumping in. There, do other NRL NRL clubs they sort of start at that under 13s as well? Uh, I think it? the ones who have big junior bases certainly do, yeah. um, and there's at different levels of. Um, programs and commitment to those types of programs we've got a good volume of, of players so you know across Bowmain and uh and west we've got probably over ten thousand players to to choose from so um we're certainly up there in terms of uh, participation numbers mm. um so i think it's again going back to that development we want to start them at under 13s and progress them all the way through um, and those programs are linked to um, essentially what happens at the top level so we try to it's almost like a, a stepping stone or if you look at the mm. school system, you know, what you learn in, in kindergarten prepares mm. you for year one and what you learn, learn in year one prepares mm. you for year two and that's what we're trying to trying to build. Um, T- tell us more, and on that too, more about the Cubs and the RAW program. Mm. So this is for young boys and girls sort of in between and outside of our rep teams, but it gives them a bit of a, a pathway. Yeah, absolutely, and that's that's the... Um, the top end of that sort of development pathway, um, the Cubs and the Raw programs bring all the players from Western Balmain um, and Group 6 together um, so that they get opportunities to play um, and train together. Mm. Um, and that's heavily focused. It's it's probably more of an educational um, type program. Um, they're all playing their own um, systems and, and clubs, but bringing them together, um, what that essentially does is, or what we're hopeful of is, when they bring them together at 16, 17 years old, mm. by the time they do get the jersey flag, they've had five years of playing with and against and training with and against um, players from Western Balmain and across our whole catchment. So, mm. um, you know, that that should put us in good stead, um, along with them learning the skills, um, both on the field, off the field. We do a lot of educational stuff, our wellbeing staff, our uh, performance staff, our nutrition staff, um, all run programs for them so that they know what to eat, how to look after themselves, um, and then get all the skills and, and stuff on top of that. So um, we've replicated that across boys and girls. Um, and now that we've got the NRLW um, licence and we're you know, waiting for our first sort of season, um, we'll have a full pathway for boys and girls to come through and aspire to play at the top level. Oh, yeah, it, it was quite an eye-opener last year when we did the Cubs and the tour to New Zealand. 
Yeah, they absolutely love that. And, and it was sort of a cultural learning experience for them as well mm. as playing over there. Yep. Um, but you know, the likes of Justin Matamur were, were in part of that group mm. who then went on to make his NRL debut. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And, that, and that's the great thing about it. Um, Justin played, um, a lot of the Harold Matz kids that played yep. in that premiership winning side played with Balmain um, players. Um, and they were all coming through. Um, Lachlan Galvin played in that, that squad. Um, so, yeah, I think there's there's a lot of opportunity for West Tigers to really galvanise that group of um, athletes, male and female, coming through um, to ensure long-term they've got success. And as we talked about, you know, it's hard at the moment because, you know, members, fans, people in here are, are hurting because of the um, performance um, of the NRL team at the moment. Um but I think if we stick to that long-term strategy, I think uh, yeah, we'll we'll certainly get there. Yeah, yeah. Well, as I say, I mean, um, yeah, I hope the the boys can put in a you know a really good performance against mm. against the Sharks and bounce back from what happened in Townsville because this year there have been you know some really good patches where we've had some you know, epic wins. We've been in the majority of games and really taken it to the opposition and. As the boys explain, you know, in the arm wrestle, in the washing machine with yeah. them, but been a couple of games like Brisbane, like Cowboys, where it's just for whatever reason has mm. got has not happened. Yeah, um, but we will bounce back hopefully on uh, on Thursday night uh, at Combank Stadium. Um, let me ask you this: If I was to say to you, Matt Betsy, head of Women's and Pathways at West Tigers, why should parents? want the children to be coming through this system? Yeah, I think that's a, a really good question. And that's one of the things we've we've focused on is that holistic development. So what I would say to any you know, parent, guardian, um, if their son or daughter is picking up a football for the first time, um, being involved in our system, um, we've had this sort of mantra of, you know, better players, better people. Um, and through that process, um, I think that we can provide the environment to help them work on what their dreams are, which is playing rugby league for in the NRL or NRLW, um, but also around that, teaching them all the other skills in that you need in life, how to look after yourself, how to train, um, some leadership, uh, what to eat, when to eat it, um, all of those sorts of things. So that looking at that holistic development, um, I think is one of the things that West Tigers is providing for boys and girls at the moment. Um, which should give parents a really um, level, big, big level of comfort um, around what their players will come out, and you know, not everyone can can make it, and not everyone will play in NRL. But if um, we can develop better people as well as better players, um, you know, they'll have a great experience with the West Tigers and walk away, and you know, they might work, and um, but they'll look fondly back at the West Tigers about their experience as well, and we'll get, hopefully give them some skills that will get them through life. Love it. Love it. So we've got the Centre of Excellence here, the Zurich Centre, which is, you know, it's great first-class facilities. Mm. We've got another one coming online at Campbelltown, a Centre of Excellence, which we will share. We it won't be all of ours, but yep. um, that's got to be good for, for your pathways in, in the southwest area. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and Campbelltown Council have done a really good job of um, making sure that that's focused on the pre-elite. So, um, you know, Centre of Sport and Health with uh, partnership with Western Sydney University. So, the players that are coming through that pathway, particularly in, in Western Sydney, um, don't necessarily have to come to Concord to um, to get access to, to great facilities and great people, great coaches, um, great support staff. Um, so that's um, really um, what we're looking for from that perspective. Um, they'll have a local facility. Um, all of our programs can be run out of there. Um, but, yeah, again, just that looking at that whole holistic sort of development, um, I think will be really up. Op- Massive opportunity for, for Western Sydney. And so the other big opportunity, obviously, Betsy, is NRLW. So it's not that far away now. Uh, 23rd of July, we take on Parramatta, right, yep. At, yep. Uh, at Combank Stadium. The very first NRLW game for West Tigers. So a piece of history. Make sure you get you, you can get there if you want. Um, it must have been a bit of fun, I imagine, putting this whole new team together, the structures around it. Yeah, challenging, but an enjoyable process and and how how satisfied are you and, and Noddy and the team with the squad that you've assembled? Yeah, it has been a, a really um, enjoyable process. Um, a challenging, definitely. Because you wouldn't have known much about NRLW and, and a lot of these girls 
you know, prior to taking up this role, right? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so yeah, so maybe when I first started, one of the um, one of the goals and the objectives was to get a license. So working on that whole um, application process with the NRL was um, again challenging, but really yeah. enjoyable to just to get into the detail and and we did a, a lot of engagement with our players we had a harvey norman team at the time who had been together for a couple of years and um just trying to engage them in in what was actually needed and what they wanted from the from an nrlw license um gave me a really good insight as to the background and the history of the club from a women's perspective and and how we you know probably took a mm. uh, made a decision three or four years ago to focus on that pathway and have um a pathway ready for an NRLW license. So um, we are definitely ready. And then going through that whole, the contracting process, uh, there mm-hmm. was some time pressures around um, that because of the delay around the CBA. Um, but yeah, working through that process with uh, people like Noddy mm-hmm. um, and getting his insights, you know, Noddy's coached at every level of the game. Um, so he's really well versed in in the game from a playing perspective, obviously, that people sort of know about, but, but also from a coaching perspective. So putting a... A squad together that reflected West Tigers um, was really enjoyable but challenging. So we wanted to um, keep the culture that had been created over the last few years and and reward some loyalty um, around mm. some local players who have come through that that system. Um, but also we wanted to go out and um, attract some top level talent as well to, as we said, to um, complement what we have um, and be out, being able to go into the market. Um, obviously, Bo has a, a strong connection with West Tigers, so locking up her signature early mm. um, was key. Um, she's a real spiritual leader, if you like, around the group. Um, and then getting um, Kezi Apps and, mm. and Sarah Togatuki, um, you know, just to, to drive our, our team up front, um, but also have some experience that um, we might not have normally in a, in a year one of a competition. Um, I think that puts us in really good stead to, mm. um, to hit the ground running come, come around one. Well, yeah, it's really exciting, and and well done uh, to you and the team on on yeah in a pretty short space of time bringing it all together. So, twenty third of July, that's uh, that's the NRLW debut for West Tigers. Really looking forward um, to that one. All right, well, that's uh, pretty much the chunk of this episode of Behind the Raw. Now, time to dive into. Hang on. Yeah, five to go. So we're going to dive in um, to your favourite five. Okay, you ready for this? Do, 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 Can't do. Wait. <laughs> I can't wait. <laughs> Brighton's lawyers are the lawyers you know and trust. If you require legal representation, then why look anywhere else? Call Brighton's lawyers on 1800 848 848. Brighton's lawyers, we do support you in your time of need. Okay, favourite five, Matthew Betsy. Okay, um, as a kid, your favourite sports person growing up? Uh, Mark Taylor. Yeah, I was a left-handed batter and I liked uh, him in maybe the, what was it, the 89 Ashes? Tubby. Tubby. I knew it would be a cricketer. <laughs> I thought it was, yeah. Uh, I always loved listening to Tubby, you know. Yeah. The distinctive voice and um, and you're, you're hearing him still on you know, Channel 9, et cetera. And, yep. Um, yeah, what a player. Uh, your favourite moment in your sports administration career to oh. date they have a tricky one yeah um look I, I really um took some pride out of the harvey norman women premiership that um we yep. won last year um yeah that that was a um a culmination of a whole heap of things that we had to put in place um, around recruitment around um development of the players, trying to prepare them for the NRLW in the future. Mm. Um, and we had a really tough year. We changed coaches, I think, three times. Um, Noddy came in as coach at one point and then got um, pulled up into the, the yeah. NRL system. So um, the resilience shown by that group of players and then to be able to go through and win that competition from an um, administrative perspective put us in really good stead for the NRLW. So yeah. I'm, I'm really excited about the, the NRLW season and, and what that might hold. Um, but that was a really significant moment for, for me personally. Yeah, absolutely. And the bulk of that team have now made the step up, part of the NRLW squad. Um, Curtin sisters uh, and a lot of uh, local juniors too yeah. have come through that that pathways. Lasana Lutu as well. She's been selected for... Um, 
New South Wales under nineteens again. Yep. Helped them win it last year. Yep. Um, yeah. No, it was a yeah a real milestone event for the club. Um, all right. Favorite part of your job. Oh, um, the favorite part of my job um, is really is the people. You know, to be able to come into the office every day and um, work with people that are so passionate about about rugby league, um, and particularly the pathways. Like I said, but you know, Paul Siren and Brett Kamali, Shannon Gallant. Um, we've just got so many people that are so passionate about the juniors that we've got coming through and the players that we've got coming through. Um, that's the best part of the job. You know, it's um, every day is enjoyable. Um, we're all working towards the same goal. Um, yes, there's challenges like you know, like every um, occupation, um, but bit, to be able to do that with those those guys and um, and you know the with the women's team that we've got sort of assembled in the background as well with around in and around the NRLW squad, um, we've got some really good people. So it's um, that's the most enjoyable part. All right. Well, on that line of thinking about people, you're having a dinner party, three guests can be anyone. Who are at your table? Um, well, good question. So I could have given you these in advance. Yeah, that, yeah, that it would have been it. better. <laughs> uh, alive or they have to be alive? No. No. I would... Uh, Mind you, they won't eat much if they're gone. <laughs> <laughs> true, true. Uh, I would have someone like a Michael Jordan. Okay. Yeah, so I think someone like that. Michael um, Jordan's there. Yeah, All right. Michael Jordan. I'd have a. I'm not sure who. You know, Jareen Buller's middle name is Jordan. Yeah, I did after know that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, carry on. Sorry, I, would, I, I don't. Know. I don't think that'd be the only person in the world that would have been no. named after him either. But um, I would have a. Wow, I'd have a comedian. Okay. Yep. I'm not sure who. All right. So. But I, I'd, um. I'll throw some comedians. Who we got? Who? Eddie Murphy? No, he's a bit rude. Yeah. Carl? <laughs> <laughs> All right, a comedian I I... to be advised. Yep. Okay. Michael uh, Jordan, comedian T, T, TBC. No, you know what? I've kicked the comedian out. I'm yep. going gonna, gonna to go Taylor Swift. Oh, have you got tickets? Yep, I do. Have you? Yep. What are I was lucky enough to get tickets, yeah. Freebies or? No, no, no. Mates rates had to had to sit online like everyone else and watch the ticket tech How much? Uh, waiting symbol. What are we paying? Uh, this for you or your kids? Cat it, both. Yeah. I was in first, mm-hmm. but um, yeah, I'm I'm a massive Swifty. Oh, yep. Build out a chair. So, uh, I'm not sure I could do that. Okay, I, I know right. all the words. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so, but I'd have t- Taylor Swift and then Swifty Jordan. Yep. One more, uh, and I'd have Dave Grohl. I reckon Foo Fighters. Lead like singer, yeah. Nirvana, drummer. I reckon he'd have a few good stories yeah. as well. So, Yeah. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. What would be um, on the menu, you think, main or, meal? I'll tell you, I'd get um, – it was probably one of the th- person people that came into my head, um, Curtis Stone. Yeah. I've been to his restaurants in uh, in the US particularly, Maud and Gwen. Um, this isn't cash for comments, by the way, but had a really good experience at those restaurants. I'd probably have him – Cater and cook for for that group. Um, okay. Good steak. Curtis Stone. Nice. Yeah. Good steak. A good steak. Yep. Mm. I don't know if Taylor Swift is vegetarian or vegan, but oh, it doesn't um, matter. Yeah, yeah. yeah have some different options for. Yeah, absolutely. Right. Oh, gee, we. we. Uh, <laughs> now, um, okay. Now it's not a dinner party; it's a desert island. Oh, no, what would you be drinking at that dinner party? Uh, red wine for sure. Yeah. Penfolds red wine. Uh, yep. Yep. Is that a cash for comment? Oh, Grange, no, but I'm, people have got but I'd, I'd be quite it. happy to, to take a bottle of Grange um, yep. as part of that. But, yeah, there'll definitely okay. be Grange on the table. Wow. Yep. Beautiful. Maybe um, a vodka Red Bull to, to finish things off. Oh, just true. Yeah. Just, okay, just get you started at <laughs> <Just> the end. <laughs> <laughs> Desert Island. Okay. You are allowed to take, and it's for one year. Matt Betsy, you're going to a Desert Island. You are allowed to take one cricketer and one rugby league player. They can be past or present. So the three of you are off to a desert island like Gilligan's Island for a year. Yeah. Uh, or Probably Tubby goes in then, does he? Uh, maybe. I would 
I would take. Oh, uh, I know one you should take. I'll come back to it. Uh, can I take Shane Warne? You can, yeah. Yeah. I reckon uh, Shane Warne would be yeah, really good entertainment value. entertainment value. For a year. I was thinking Matty um, Hayden to help you with sort of survival sort yeah, of stuff. Yeah, fishing he would certainly, and, yeah, yeah. Uh, all that. Yeah, no, he would certainly help with that. Right, um, Warney. If I go Warney and rugby league player, I reckon I'd go not for his footy ability, but I really enjoy listening to Matty Johns. So oh God. I could Can I, you imagine Warney and Matty Johns? Yeah, yeah, exactly. I don't know if I'd be able to keep up, but um <laughs> I reckon there'd be some stories there. <laughs> um mm. yeah. And they get sick of my questions about dissecting cricket well, and rugby league, both of them. But they, yeah, I reckon oh, they could wow. Good idea, yeah. I reckon the year would go real quick. Yeah, I reckon it would. That would be some <laughs> cultural tour <laughs> to Gilligan's Island. <laughs> Betsy, Warney, and Matty Johns. Oh, God. Mate, well, I appreciate you jumping in. Um, it is, it's insightful, isn't it? So getting to know a bit more about you and, and what you do here. I mean, clearly we are putting a lot of resources and effort into Pathways, as, as mm. we need to do, because yep. it's such an important role yep. um, strategically for us just looking ahead then um to thursday night it's a huge game for the boys obviously um can they bounce back uh from the performance in townsville i, I certainly hope they do and i'm sure they can uh, yep. they've been training really hard um this week sharks they are on track for a top four finish i think they're third at the moment um with nine games to play they were smashed by the storm, weren't they, uh, not so long ago, 54-10. That was in round 15. But since then, they've bashed up the Bulldogs. Mm. I think they put about 50 on them. And then the Dragons last Thursday. Yeah. They punished the Dragons. So they're a team in, in good form. Um, they have won nine of their past 10 games against West Tigers. Doesn't augur well, doesn't read well, but um, including both games last year. So it's going to be a tough one. Either way you look at it, get out there if you can to, to Combank Stadium. Uh, Twiley's out, obviously, um, with that one-game suspension. A yeah. couple of injuries in the back line. Um, Knopf and Nato both got shoulder problems. Yeah. Uh, but AJ comes in, Tommy Talau comes in as well. They both missed um, last weekend. So, you know, it's still a very, very strong team. Uh, and... A debutant too, I believe, uh, in line, Asatasi, Itasi rather, James, in line to make his NRL debut, which would just be you know, amazing um, for him and, and for the club. Get there if you can. Thursday night, 7.50 p.m. kickoff at Combank Stadium against Cronulla Sharks. And we will do it again. Win, lose or draw. We'll be back again next week with Behind the Raw. You know the drill. Until then, show your stripes. Behind the Raw, the official podcast of West Tigers.